Welcome in to Raiders Training Camp Special. Amber Theo Harris along with Eric Allen. The first of two joint practices this week against the 49ers getting ready for that first preseason game that's yep. going to kick off at Allegiant Stadium on Sunday. And I'll tell you, Eric, it's been fun to watch Jimmy Garoppolo yeah. out there. Uh, Going up against his former team, the team that he left. And one thing we're learning about Jimmy Garoppolo is this Josh McDaniels offense, he has said, is very different than yeah. when it was in New England. It has evolved in a lot of ways. But also that what he's being asked to do here is very different than what Kyle Shanahan had him doing at the 49ers. Yeah, for sure, Amber. A 10th year vet from Eastern Illinois, right, has his own football team. Remember last year, he wasn't even taking reps because they thought they were going to go with a different uh, quarterback. So thought they were going to trade him. Yes, that's right. That's right. <laughs> So Jimmy's in a really good spot right now. Leadership off the board, just incredible leadership. And that's what counts first of all, particularly in training camp. You see the side conversations with Devontae, with Hunter Renfro, with Jacoby Myers. So all those things are positive on the football field. You got to have some emotion though, going against his former club in the yeah. 49ers. So today was really a good day for Jimmy G. You love to see a guy like him being able to include everyone and everyone's a little bit better because he's in the huddle. Yeah, and he said that there's some pre-snap responsibilities that are a little yeah. bit different in this offense than, than with the 49ers. Yeah, a little more responsibility for him. You know, usually teams like to do the first 15 plays scripted. Uh, our ball club, on the other hand, does a lot of things under center with the quarterback being able to look at the defense and make some adjustments on his own. So he's going to have to be tied to the hip with Josh McDaniels. And Josh even said a couple years uh, ago when, when Jimmy was in – uh, New England that the offense is a little bit different mm -hmm. so you know we people you talk about you know the relationship and yes the relationship is strong but the offense has changed a little bit like you were mentioning and so he's going to have to really get into that playbook and understand exactly what's expected of him for our football team. A lot of things to learn for sure and when we look on the defensive side of the ball a lot of people have question marks about the secondary. How will it look different than last year? Well one thing we saw sitting out there at practice Marcus Peters yeah. makes this look a lot different. What else did you see? Yeah he's a dude and, mm -hmm. and again a lot like uh, Jimmy and talking about the relationship, the uh, communication back and forth. You see him in between plays, talking to the safeties, talking to the other corners, and it's great to do the talking, but he's picking off passes, right? Yeah. In practice, understanding route recognitions, understanding when to jump routes. All those things are doing wonders for our secondary this year. And overall, you know, just as far as turnovers and what to expect and, and the expectations of a cornerback. When you're on a football team with Marcus, you really raise the level. And there's a couple developments in the secondary. With Marcus being uh, there, you're able to have Nate Hobbs on the inside, yes. which seems a little bit more natural to him. Right. And then Ja'Cory and Bennett, the Woo. rookie out of Maryland, is catching a yes. lot of eyes out there. He, he really is. And yeah. he's done an incredible job of just uh, – and we, we looked at some of the film, you know, and Ja'Cory does an outstanding job of just really leveraging routes, being in the right place at the right time, making plays on the ball. He has really popped out as a rookie on our football team right now. So if he can really – continue to play well on the outside that a guy that again leaves Hobbs in the inside and of course Marcus on the outside you have your two safeties Epps mm -hmm. who's really played well so far had a great run last year with the Philadelphia Eagles and then along with Trayvon who we're going to talk to a little bit later uh, I think this secondary is looking like it's going to be a, a really positive for our team. Yeah Trayvon had a little pick out there against yes, the 49ers today yeah. we're going to talk to him as you said coming up in just a bit but also another standout in the joint practices was Zamir White. You know, we sit there with our roster, and you see somebody make a play, and I went, wow, I didn't know Zamir White had that kind of power on some yeah. of those runs. I think that was a real positive. It really was. And going back to his Georgia days, uh, that's one of the things that he had to do. He had to really, really uh, be that kind of guy who can, you know, get the ball on first, second down, and plot, a, plot a, uh, a lane through the middle of the football field with all those big guys down in the SEC. And that's something he's improved on here. You can tell he's gotten a little bit bigger this year. Yeah. And that's what it takes. You know, that first year as a pro, I mean, it's demanding. You really have to figure out what's best for you. You know, you come in, you try and find your spot, try and find where you can really help the football team. And I think on first and second down right now, he's going to be the guy. Yeah, I liked Amir Abdullah as well. We'll keep an eye on yes, him. Seems yeah. like he's going to be a real contributor yep. as well. All right, we're going to take a break here on Raiders Training Camp Special. Coming up next, it is Trayvon Merrick. He joins us to talk about his role in year three. Raiders Training Camp Special is brought to you by 
Sirius XM. Subscribe to Sirius XM and hear every Raiders game plus 24-7 NFL news, talk, and expert analysis on Sirius XM NFL Radio. Start listening at SiriusXM.com slash Raiders 23. Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, non-stop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Joining us now is Trayvon Merrick. He's uh, entering his third season with the Silver and Black. And Trayvon, we saw you out there just a few minutes ago at practice, and you were already picking off the 49ers. <laughs> How are you feeling at this camp? Uh, I'm feeling good. You know, it's just good energy in the building. Um, you know, it was finally good to go against another opponent. Um, but, yeah, just a good day of work, um, just working our craft, working our technique. So it was a good day overall. Yeah, this training camp a little different from uh, the first couple, having a guy like uh, Marcus Epps and Marcus Peters in the building. Talk to us a little bit about what they have uh, given you guys in that room. Yeah, they're just great leaders. You know, they have a lot of knowledge of the game. Uh, I've been in, you know, some big ball games. So um, I think our guys, especially the young guys, just picking their brains, like I said before, just, you know, anything they can get from them just to get better and play fast on the field. A lot of national buzz around you having a good camp. We're looking at you right now. You look like you put on a little bit of muscle as well. Talk about just your mindset, the intentionality coming into this camp and the decision to bulk up a little bit. Um, yeah, I mean, my mindset is just, you know, just focusing on, you know, like I said, technique and fundamentals. And I know if I can do that, it'll take me, you know, further and making some plays. So hopefully I can keep that going forward. But um, like I said, you know, I've been putting on a little weight, eating some more food and some calories. So, um, you know, I feel comfortable but, or where I am right now. But, um, yeah, like I said, it's been a good camp what, so far. What's, what's the go-to food? What bulk, what, what does the safety do to bulk up? I know what line men eat, but what does the safety do? I ain't going to lie. I've been, I've been doing a lot of, like, protein shakes, to be honest okay. with you. So, like, after lifts, you know, put a little creatine in. And some, you know, uh, chocolate, banana, peanut butter shake. That's my go-to. So. Oh, no Big Macs. Okay, yeah. good. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> no, no Big Macs. Uh -uh. Well, once you get into the league, you kind of understand what the season's about, what's expected of you. We always have things we need to work on. Uh, what are uh, the specific things that you worked on uh, this off season that we'll be able to see during the season? Uh, man, I, I, I've said it before. It's just, you know, just constantly working on my technique and fundamentals, my communication. You know, those are the big kind of three things that, um, especially as a safety, you kind of need. So uh, I've been in the film room. Like I said, been picking some of the older guys' brains, been talking to coach. You know, just any, in a, any little thing that could get me better, I'm just trying to get to it, so. Taking advantage of these joint practices, I know during the regular season you guys get a chance to see the Kansas City Chiefs twice and you get an up-close look at one of the best tight ends in the league in Travis Kelsey. Uh, then at these practices you get another one in George Kittle. How do both of those guys and the experience going up against them as a safety make you better? Um, you know, they're just great athletes overall. You know, they can do a lot of different things. They're very versatile. Um, and like you said, they're big names, you know. Um, they play the game at a high level. They're fat, they're, they play it fast. They're very smart. So anytime you can go against those guys, it's going to, you know, put you, um, you know, on that water and try to make you better, so. Responsibility-wise, we've seen uh, you come into the league and uh, playing that deep safety, playing uh, tight ends one-on-one. Responsibility-wise, without letting us know details, mm -hmm. uh, what do you think your responsibility is going to be this year? Man, really just doing what coach asked me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's all I can do. So Good answer. Do, doing whatever he tells me to do, just doing it at a fast tempo and, you know, hopefully making some plays out of it, so. And you know what, you're, this is the first time in four years that you've had the same defensive coordinator year to year. Your last two years at TCU, there was a transition in coordinator. Then you come here and there's Gus Bradley and then you transition last year to Patrick Graham. How important yeah. is it just to have continuity in a scheme and be comfortable? Man, PG is a great leader, man. He's a great coach, um, always has great energy coming into the building. Um, you know, like he always says, we're coworkers. So I like, you know, our work environment. We're able to talk um, through things and, uh, you know, cut up at the same time. So it's a good work environment. He's been doing a great job so far. Well, Trayvon, I know a lot of people are excited to see what you do here in year three. Best of luck during training camp. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. Welcome back, everybody. Joining us now is a man that has won Super Bowls with both the Raiders and the 49ers. So we just saw him out there at joint practice. Uh, Matt Millen, welcome to the show. And Matt, a uh, little different than maybe when you were playing. I know you were drafted in 1980. Do these practices look a little different and the camps look a little different than back in the day? You think? <laughs> oh, my God. Do they look a little different? Well, first of all, they actually give you water if you need it. <laughs> Second of all, 
I see people walking around with their helmets off, which was a complete no-no. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, so it was the, the rosters weren't as big. So you had everybody doing something. So you just, and it was like three, we had practices, full pads three times a day. <laughs> And there was no so, cooling tents. Was there cooling tents at the time with mist? Cooling tents. I, mean, <laughs> I don't think that was even, <laughs> that wasn't even an imagination. Oh, my goodness. But, hey, you know, that's the way it was. And you know, the weird thing was we practiced three times a day. We went three times in pads, and uh, nobody got hurt. It was the weirdest thing. <laughs> and so we came into practices, and camps were a little longer then, and you had four preseason games just coming off of five preseason games. And so what ended up happening is you kept that extra weekend and you just practiced. And guys would come into camp probably in less, how should I put this, in not as good shape as they are now, since we really, we didn't have a weight room. We didn't have, you have a, a dining room. You have all kinds of stuff here now that's unbelievable. And so it's way ahead of where it was. And, uh, but on the practice side, I think it's kind of on the soft side, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> but what else would you expect yeah, to say, right? Yeah, yeah. Now, talk to us a little bit about the, the off-season uh, meal plan. <laughs> yeah. The off-season. Yeah, that's a good one. So that was if your wife could cook, you had a good off-season meal plan. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's, it. As, that's as far as it went. Uh, hey, Matt, tell us, uh, just you were out there taking a look, especially at some of the linebackers. This defense clearly struggled last year. What are some takeaways that you saw? Well, I think, so you have to take a step back and put it in perspective. So what's going on in this league right now is the same thing that's been going on for the last 40 years. But right now it is kind of, we're at the, we're at the edge of it. So, and when I say that, I mean, um, and for, for the last 40 years, we've been saying this is a passing league. This is becoming a passing league. And now it is a pure passing league. And so the emphasis has to be on speed. And so when you start emphasizing speed in certain spots, you're going to give up size. And um, we were talking about this earlier. And one of the things that where you see it is in, is in the linebacker spot. And so gone are the days when you can strike somebody and get off of them. And, you know, so when I played, I played it like I played around 265. And now you're looking at these linebackers in their 230. You're like, that's what our safeties were. Yeah. And so it's just a, it's just different. It's uh, it's probably not as physical in terms of what you're seeing up front. A lot of hand playing. It, it used to be face and hands. Now it's hands and hands. And so um, a little different, uh, a little bit different game, but essentially the same thing. So uh, that leads me to a next question is like when you're building a football team uh, like you were able to do, where do you start? Do you start in the trenches? Do you start at, you know, those uh, hybrid type linebackers? Where do you start to build a team on the defense? Yeah, on the defensive side, it has to start on the inside. So you've got to get, you have to have big people inside and you have to have a pass rusher. You got to have a pass rusher and you have to have a guy who can, uh, who can cover the pass. You have to have at least one good man cover guy. In today's league, you really should have three. But if you don't have, if you have one good guy, you can take away their one, you can kind of work the rest of those things. So you got to have a corner, you got to have a pass rusher. And then you have to have some size up front to be able to take the, uh, the inside stuff away. And that's why the backers' safeties can be a little smaller. They have to be able to run. They have to be able to get there with speed. And sometimes if you have an offense that's just going to pound it on, you're going to you're going to struggle a little bit, which is what happened last year uh, here. So they're, they're, they're going to have to – the best way to play for this team is going to be to get some points behind your back and then kind of dictate things. I want to ask you about the secondary. Um, we're seeing a lot of battles out there with the 49ers just a few minutes ago. Is there anybody in the secondary that's standing out? Like, I know there's a lot of buzz around Marcus Peters having a good camp. We just saw Trayvon Merrick, who's on the show today, um, pick off the 49ers. What are you seeing from the secondary? Yeah, I like the group. Um, I like Hobbs. I think Hobbs, he's a good player. I think he's a young player. I think he's getting better. I think he's figuring the game out. I think with Epps back there, it'll help him. Um, all those guys – what they what they really need right now is just to get on the same page and once they do and they will and and that'll take a lot of conversation that'll take a lot of calling and getting on the same page on the field and and when they do i think athletically i think it's a pretty good group yeah they are uh our defense last year in 2022 uh, talk to us a little bit about some positives and some things we have to change well max is a positive and 
So we have that piece. Um, I, I still think you have to get a little bit more stout at the linebacker spot. I, I you know, 225 doesn't do it for me. 230 <laughs> doesn't do it for me. I'm, you know, give me at least a 240 guy. Right, yeah. Uh, but somebody, what you really want to see, though, is you want to have somebody who can thump in there, you know. They, so these, all, these offensive linemen now, they come out and they just try to grab you. They'll come up and, and their first two steps are straight up in the air. So... To me, that's an invitation to knock a guy out. <laughs> just, you got to be <laughs> kidding me. You're going to stand, okay, I will put a hole in your chest. So if we can have that and get back to a little bit of that, and it doesn't have to be all the time, um, but try to put some of that physical stuff back into it, I think that would help us a lot. Matt, the, the lack of turnovers was a major issue. And in your experience, you've been on so many different championship teams. You have four Super Bowl rings to prove it. How do you learn to force turnovers. Where does that begin? What is the process like? It's a mindset. It's funny you bring that up because uh, a lot of times people talk about it and they say you can't control that, but you couldn't be further from the truth. You can control that, but you have to be aware of it all the time. And so first man in tackles, second man in pulls. And so that's that's the way you, you have to play it and, and approach it. First guy you're going to make the tackle, you have to make the tackle, right? But the second guy who's in there, you try to get that ball out. And it's a conscious thing. And you have to be aware of it, and you have to practice it, and you have to get good at it. And teams that practice it, they get better at it, and, you, and you'll see the numbers rise. Yeah. Uh, the second year of uh, Josh McDaniel's <clears throat> tenure here with the Raiders, anything that uh, you have uh, talked to him about, about being uh, successful uh, this, this next year? No, I think the biggest thing for a young coach like that in your second year is you've already established what you're going to be in your first year. And so in your second year, you just have to you just have to be true to what you are. And so uh, I'd like to see them get uh, Jacob signed. That I think would go a long way. I think that's a big piece. I think it's a he's a tough kid. And I think he's also one of those guys who's uh, who probably has the uh, the ear of the locker room. And so I think that would be a piece that you'd have to get done. And, but, uh, you know, all that being said, the, the pieces are in place. They're better than they were a year ago. You can see that. And just how far, we'll see. I, I do think we gotta got to get a little stronger on the defensive side of the ball. The offense can help us if we can get points. But uh, it's not going to happen like that all the time. Matt Mellon, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Enjoy not a the problem. rest of camp. Good and to talk to you guys. Enjoy Alumni Weekend. <laughs> All right, more to come here on the Training Camp Special. Don't go anywhere. Raiders Training Camp Special is brought to you by Allegiant, the official airline of the Las Vegas Raiders. Low fares, non stop flights. Book now only at Allegiant.com. Sirius XM, subscribe to Sirius XM and hear every Raiders game, plus 24 7 NFL news talk and expert analysis on Sirius XM NFL radio. Start listening at SiriusXM.com slash Raiders 23. Welcome back. This is our final training camp special for this preseason. And of course, we've got to give you guys some predictions of what we think could possibly happen. And I don't think they're bold predictions. I think we no. came up with some very realistic, realistic ones. Right. All right, why don't you hit me with one, EA? Well, coming off of back to back, six interception seasons, which is very low, which is very, <laughs> very low. low. Mm -hmm. I'm predicting overall turnovers will be above 20. Okay. And, and that's big time. Okay. That's giving the ball back to the offense, allowing them to get some points. And that's what this game's all about. It's all about getting turnovers. We have to get turnovers, whether it's sack, strip, interceptions. We have to find a way to get the ball back to our offense and allow those receivers to get all those big numbers. And that was your job. You used to take balls that's away right. from quarterbacks, and you to. know how that can change the momentum oh. of an entire game. Look at, look that. at, look at, look at <laughs> There he goes. We all remember that one. Yes. Hey, and if they get 20 or more, that would put them in kind of the middle of the pack yes. for the NFL from that's, last year. So that's a that's dramatic right. improvement. Yes. All right, mine is that I think I'm going to see uh, Jacoby Myers mm -hmm. maybe be a thousand yard receiver. All right, I, okay. I was watching him out there at practice, and you know what? He had 866 receiving yards. In 21 he had uh -huh. 804 in 22 and that's with the Patriots <laughs> did you guys see Mac Jones and the Patriots in that <laughs> office they had a defensive coordinator calling <laughs> offensive plays and he still had a really good season so I see a lot of defenses those safeties rolling over to Devontae early in the season yes and then Jacoby Myers is going to be open you know what Jacoby's always gonna be in the right spot 
He's going to use his hands uh, to catch the ball. What I've been surprised about a little bit is he has some of that Devontae Adams wiggle at the line okay. of scrimmage. I didn't think he had that. So he's brought a little more to his game. And, of course, you're going to be focused on Devontae. You're going to be focused on maybe Meyer, the tight end. So that's going to leave him opportunities really to get open. So I hope that happens too. I have big predictions for Michael Mayer as well at, at tight end. Okay. I keep going back to Gronk. That was that guy that did a lot of things in New England with Josh McDaniels. <laughs> and I feel like this is their second round draft pick. This is a guy that they're very excited about. Uh -huh. I think he's going to be very helpful also in the red zone, which is where the Raiders struggled a lot oh, last man. year. That, that's it, Amber. Yeah. If we could have someone in the red zone outside of maybe Hunter, to really be a factor in the red zone, that's it. That's that's winning football games. Yeah. Red zone and interceptions. All right, that's that's all they have that's to it. do. It's easy. <laughs> all right, here coming up, uh, we've got pregame, uh, preseason week one against the 49ers coming up on Sunday. Then it is in L.A. against the Rams on August 19th, and then at the Cowboys August 26th. And then look at that. Week one. Right around we're the corner. So we're less than a month away from week one at the Broncos, a yeah. divisional matchup to kick off the season September 10th. Hey, we'll be there. We can't wait to see you. Thanks for joining us all preseason long. Check everything out on the Raiders official YouTube page. We'll see you for EA. I'm Amber Theo Harris.